What's happening everyone? In this video I'm going to be taking my last project which was a car that you can control over Wi-Fi and we're going to be giving it a revamp. We're going to make it smaller, faster and better looking. In this video we're going to be using some ChatGPT, Fusion 360 and my 3D printers to go ahead and give this a much needed upgrade. Let's get into it. So in the second version of this car there are really two main things that I wanted to focus on improving. The first was the, was the appearance of the car. It was a bit too big, it was just a bit too bulky and the colour scheme was all wrong and this could definitely do with some improvement. And then the second issue was the latency. It took a little bit too long for the car to reflect the commands are sending it through the app so this is definitely something that we could improve on. So the first step in the process was to dismantle the old car, salvage whatever parts I can and then get to work on trying to hit those objectives. Again, make it better looking, make it faster. Alright guys, so this is the motor driver I was using in the last car and it's really well supported, really easy to use. The main problem is that it's just too big and you end up having to create a large enclosure around it and that's just not ideal for what we're after. So to tackle this issue, this time around we're going to be going for this. So this is a DRV8833 motor driver and it works almost exactly like the L289 with a couple of compromises. But as you guys can see, it's just massively, massively smaller. So if you put the two drivers together, guys, you can see there is a massive difference in size. And immediately we're going to be able to make the second car a lot smaller just by making this change. But the second problem that we're having is definitely, definitely more important. So the reason the first car was so slow is because any command that I sent, it was going from my phone, through my router and then to the car. And that time span is where we were getting delays. This time, we're going to be using something called ESP Now, which allows two ESP boards to talk directly to each other, thereby removing the need for a router in the middle, making things a lot quicker. So, with that information in hand, I logged on to ChatGPT, told it exactly what I was trying to do, and gave it all the information it needed to help me with the project. Now, I've had a few messages from a few viewers who have asked me a little bit more about using GPT for projects like this and what I'll say is it's definitely a force multiplier in that it makes a lot of tasks easier but learning how to use it for this sort of thing is almost a skill in and of itself so by all means go and use it, I use it all the time for a lot of different things but I wouldn't ever suggest that it gets rid of any brain work from you you're still going to need to put in some effort and, and know how to troubleshoot things that being said it makes things a lot quicker and a lot easier so definitely learn how to use it just be mindful that you'll still need to put in a little bit of legwork to get the maximum benefit out of it the next step was to use the information I got from GPT to try assembling some breadboards this time rather than using my phone as a controller I'm going to make a dedicated remote control so that was also part of the plan. Alright guys, so here is the finished breadboard for the motors. Here's our 9 volt battery. And that then goes into a voltage regulator which drops it down to 5 volts. And that helps power our ESP. And then we also have the battery powering our motor driver. Which in turn controls the two motors. I've labelled one of them just to make it a bit easier for myself. A couple of extra details, I've added a switch which helps me turn the battery on and off and just makes it a bit easier than connecting and reconnecting the ESP. And also, a little LED there just so that I can have a visual representation of when the circuit is being powered. I'm planning to make that a feature of the end product as well. But that's the finished breadboard for the motors. Let's have a look at the joystick. And here's our joystick breadboard. So we've got our 3.7 volt LiPo battery connected to a charging module, which in turn powers our ESP and the joystick module itself. And as before, we've got an LED, which will hopefully turn on once the circuit's powered up and a switch just to add another layer of control. And after a little bit of trial and error, I was able to get both breadboards put together perfectly. They were working as intended, and the LEDs were a great touch as well. A note on ESP now, it sounds simple in concept, but it does take a little bit of tweaking and tinkering. 
If you're planning to use this, make sure you pay really good attention to the MAC addresses of both the sender and the receiver because I kept getting caught out on that part, but we got there in the end. So when I set out to make this second version, if you remember one of the targets that I set for myself was that I wanted this version to be better looking than the last. So while, when the electronics were out of the way, I went online to see what cars I could draw inspiration from. And I've always thought the design for the Tesla Cybertruck is just out of this world cool. I'm a big fan of minimalist design and this is just, I just love it. So I thought I'd go for this. So I found some reference images online imported them into Fusion as a canvas so I can get the overall shape and then use that as the chassis and then I modeled everything else around it so I had space for the motors, a housing for the electronics, the wheel, the tires and everything else and this is what it looked like. Once I was happy with the designs I'd made in Fusion, it was off to the 3D printers to go ahead and get all the parts manufactured. Whilst the printers were working away, I got to soldering together the circuit boards for both the car and the controller. For the car, I put everything on a perf board just because it makes it a lot easier to manage with all the components mounted in one place. It also makes it easier to design an enclosure to go around it, so that's why I went for that. For the remote control, because there were just a handful of components, I decided to just solder them together and then I made a simple box to go around it so the joystick would be sticking out. Once everything was soldered up, I did a quick little test just to make sure that after soldering everything was working as intended, and it was. By this point the 3D printers had finished and I had all the parts that I needed to go ahead and start assembling everything. So I'm a big fan of using these little 3M sticky pads just to mount electronic components. It might not be the cleanest way or the most orthodox way but they are really really firm so once you get one in they tend not to move whatever component you've attached them onto. And this is really key for this bit because the component that I attached it to in this case was the charging module so that I can recharge the battery to the RCA controller if I ever need to. The rest of the circuitry for the controller was the ESP itself, the joystick module, a LiPo battery and of course the charging module. I really think the LED was a great shout here because without it it would actually be quite difficult to tell whether the control was on or off so it serves a functional purpose but also it looks pretty cool as well when it's on. So here is the finished controller and all in all it's pretty good. It's easy to hold and use but I've noticed a couple of things we can improve on. Mainly the stock joystick this module comes with, I didn't actually model enough space for it. I don't know if you guys can see but when I move it to sort of up, down, left, right it's catching the bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and model a new joystick to sit on top of it that's a little bit thinner. After that I think we're pretty much good to go. So that's, a, that's the bottom there. Here is our switch to turn it on and off. So if you flick it, you see the light come on there. Off, on, off. That's just to let you know it's actually on, otherwise you'd have no way of telling. And when the battery runs out, there is our USB-C slot to go ahead and charge up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a new one model. Once the controller was done, I then moved on to the car itself. For the car, I got ready a small LED strip that will go up against the front of the car and it'll be covered by a diffuser which gives it that headlight appearance. The rest was fairly straightforward. I really wanted to go for a Tesla Cybertruck vibe here so 
that's the angle I went for with this one and it looked pretty similar maybe not quite there all the way the rest of the circuit was again fairly simple it was the ESP32 I used a voltage regulator because I needed 9 volts to power the motors the voltage regulator kept the ESP32 safe the LED a switch and that's pretty much it After that, it was just a simple case of putting everything together using a little bit of super glue and some M3 nuts and bolts. So here I wired everything up according to the breadboard and part of the final design included having the switch facing the exterior of the car which means it's easier to turn it on and off when, when it's not being used. The last car that I made I didn't actually have the ability to turn it off so the battery would just run out and then I'd have to unscrew everything and replace the battery so this is the, although it's one of the smaller modifications it's definitely one that makes life a little bit easier.
So guys, I've had a little bit of a play around with the car and one thing I've noticed is that the TPU tires that we made, they're a little bit too small. So on certain surfaces, they don't gain enough traction and actually sometimes they don't even really make that much contact with the floor. So I'm gonna head back into Fusion and model tires, just the same ones, just make them a little bit thicker so that it gives the, a little bit more purchase on the surfaces that the car's gonna be on if you like. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I was really happy with the larger tyres and I think it was a good decision to remodel them. Not only did they make the car look a little bit nicer, it gave that sort of tank like look, but more importantly it stopped the car from skidding and sliding on different surfaces so I think changing the tyres gave it more traction or something like that. But either way it worked really well and I'm happy I made that choice. Right, so looking back, when I started to make this car, I had two main objectives. The first was to make it better looking than the first one, which is a box I think we've ticked. It looked a little bit like a cyber truck, although that part of the design could have done it with a bit more improving, but it's a step in the right direction, especially when you compare it to the boxy, bulky look of the first version. And then the second goal was to make it so that when I send it a command through the controller, it's more responsive. And as you can see from the footage here, it's a lot more agile and it just responds a lot quicker to the commands. So all in all, I feel like it's a job well done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a real blast making it. It's definitely one of my more involved projects. Please like, subscribe, and leave some comments down below to show some support. I'll leave some links to other projects that I made that are similar, and I'll see you all next time.